and so on. So the first thing I want to talk about, and this is something that um, students might not be so eager to do, but it can be a real a game changer for you, and that's that if you work slightly ahead of where you're at in your class, it'll make all the difference for you. So what happens is if you just take a look ahead, maybe talk to your teacher, say, what are we getting into next? And if you can read that portion of you know the book, just skim it, maybe look at the formulas, maybe familiarize yourself with what you're going to be getting into when you're in class and you're sitting there and you're wondering, okay, what are we going to be doing? When your teacher starts going through those concepts, you already have a framework. You already know what's coming. It's like if a pitcher, you know, they're going to be throwing a certain type of pitch, like a curveball, you know that you know where it's going to go and you're ready to hit it and it's the same thing here you know if you know what's coming up you're already ready you've created the mental framework to know where your teacher is going and what the significance is of what you're learning and how it ties together so what i recommend to a lot of students and i know they're a little bit reluctant to do that because they're already overloaded what they already have but your goal is to get just a little bit ahead even if it's just a half a lesson ahead of where you're at in terms of preparing yourself to be ready to learn that material. So that's the first um, thing that I would do to be a better math student is to work slightly ahead. Okay, the next thing that you want to do to be a better math student is you want to memorize or rememorize if you've forgotten certain key facts. Now I find when I work with a lot of students, they don't know some of these key facts and it makes math a lot more difficult than it needs to be. So what are some of those facts? Well, you want to definitely know you know, your multiplication tables up to 12 times 12. If you don't know those, just take some time, get a stack of those flashcards, memorize those, and commit to doing that because every little thing that you do as far as knowing these key facts, it's gonna save you time. It's gonna give you the confidence to tackle problems with getting, without getting bogged down at those min, the minutia, the little minute details. The other thing you wanna learn are things like, you know, perfect squares up to like 25 times 25. So, you know, you wanna know, you know, six times six is 36, uh, 13 times 13 is 169, you know, and so on. You wanna learn some of those larger um, perfect squares because those come up a lot in problems. Now you wanna learn formulas you know of course you're learning different things like you know ratios like sine and cosine and tangent ratios you're learning about you know areas of shapes and volumes of figures and so on all those formulas you want to commit to memory uh, it's just like you know you never forget the names of your friends you never forget the names of your teachers why is that well it's because you know you're in communication with them you know, you say their names often, and so you're not gonna forget them. It's the same thing with math. You need to spend a little bit more time memorizing those key facts. Why? Because it's gonna make everything that you do easier. You're not gonna have to, you know, go back to the very beginning again. What's that formula? How do I do this? Where's my calculator? It's gonna make math a lot easier and a lot more fun and more enjoyable, and you can focus on learning the more challenging aspect of the problems without getting bogged down in the minutia. Okay, my third tip, for you if you want to become a better math student is to work backwards. So I oftentimes say, you know, if you want to go forwards, it doesn't hurt to take a few steps backwards because then when you go and move forwards, you're going to be able to be, you know, more efficient and you're going to be able to make faster progress because you've filled in the gaps by moving backwards and looking back at, you know, what you may have missed in earlier classes. So the way I, uh, you know, recommend that you do this is if you're doing a problem and say for example there's something that you stumble on in the problem that's not really the key aspect of the problem it might be fractions it might be negative numbers it might be some kind of a formula that you missed it might be some little simple concept that you're just you're stuck on but that's not really the main you know thrust of the problem it's not what they're really trying to have you uh, get tested on or have you you do but you recognize that hey this thing is slowing me way down i'm stuck that's when you want to just write that down and say, I have to go back so that I can learn how to know how to do this little concept so that when I see this in problems, I don't get stuck there. So what I say, and this is my recommendation to you, is work backwards to move more efficiently and faster forwards. Okay, my fourth tip for you, if you wanna become a better math student, is you need to learn, in my opinion, some mental math. You don't wanna be, you know, uh, completely depend on your calculator for every calculation that you do. You wanna develop some number sense where you have a sense of, you know, how to do some of these calculations. It'll give you a sense of confidence when you see, you know, a couple of two digit numbers and you can multiply those in your head or you can do those calculations quickly. You won't get bogged down in the problem and you'll feel a sense of, you know, ease and fun when you're doing these problems and it'll just give you that sense of confidence. I'll show you a quick technique that just helps a lot of students. Like, say you're just multiplying, let's say uh, five times 18. Now, five times 18 is probably not something that you memorize. It might not be one of those facts, but a simple technique is 18 is really like 10 plus eight. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna do in our head, five times 10 is 50, five times eight is 40, right? And what is five, 50 plus 40? That's 90, right? So even though that's not one of our 
you know, key concepts that, you know, or facts that we need to, you know, memorize, we can quickly just do this mental math technique of using the distributive property by splitting that number up into two numbers that are smaller, one that ends in a zero. So we can do that mental math calculation. And there's a lot of little other techniques that are like that when you're working with fractions or when you're working with decimals. So look for those little techniques and your teachers can show you some of those techniques. I'd be happy to show you some of those techniques in my videos. Um, but learn those little shortcuts because that'll make math a lot easier for you and a lot quicker and a lot more fun. Tip number five that I want to share with you is to do more challenging problems. Usually in every homework assignment or in every textbook, there's like a little section of challenge problems. And what you want to do is not shy away from those problems, not just skip those problems, just say my teacher will go over those or just I'm just going to ignore those. Try to engage with those problems, you know, struggle with those problems, try to understand what they're talking about because it's just like lifting weights. You know, if you lift heavier weights, you know, you get stronger. And then when you go to lift uh, lighter things, okay, it's no problem. It's like an easy, you know, it's easy because you've already, you know, built up that strength, you know, of challenging yourself. And so that's what I encourage you to do is do tougher problems so that when you go to do the basic problems, it's a breeze for you. You know, you've already, you know, stretched the limits of what you can do through you know, tackling on those more difficult problems. So that's step number five is to do more challenging problems. Okay, tip number six is learn how to navigate story problems. Basically what math is, okay, it, it's a story problem. You wanna solve something in your everyday life, you know, it's, it's basically a word problem. You say, I'm presented with this, you know, uh, situation, how do I solve it? You know, what's, what's the solution? Or how do I go about, you know, writing an equation to, to tackle this? And so get used to working with story problems and learning how to, you know, read them and understand what they're asking and then, you know, how to tackle those problems and break them down. So what I recommend is, you know, draw a diagram, you know, then write an equation, find out what the unknowns are, you know, um, and so on. You want to be able to, you know, break down those story problems and then put it into that math language that you're probably already familiar with and then go ahead and solve it. So don't skip those story problems. Have your teacher help you if you're stuck on story problems, but don't be intimidated by them. One other technique when I approach story problems is that it's like I know it's going to be this, you know, more time consuming thing. So what I do is I actually, instead of slowing down, I speed up. I'll skim that story problem really quickly. Usually read that last sentence, you know, what are they talking about? Then I'll go back through and I'll pick out the key points of the problem. But again, by drawing a picture, bringing it to life, bringing it from words into, you know, a picture form into then into an equation, and then you can solve it. You know, you're going to have a sense of satisfaction that, you know, when you see story problems, you're no longer intimidated by them because, you know, you have a framework for approaching those. So my, my sixth tip for you is to really get good at story problems. Okay, my seventh tip for you, how to be a better math student is get some help. So what you want to do is you don't want to let yourself fall behind. A lot of times students, you know, they'll fall behind. It gets a little bit more difficult to catch up while you're catching up. You're learning new material. You kind of miss that material because you didn't get the previous material. And it's kind of like this downward spiral and you don't want to get caught into that. So what I recommend is, you know, get help from your teacher, whether it means coming, you know, in a few minutes early or asking questions in class or staying a couple minutes later or, you know, coming in on your lunch hour or whatever it is, you know, I would say get some help, whether it's from your teacher or another option is, you know, buddy up with one of your classmates, you know, say, hey, you know, let's get together, let's study, let's you know, quiz each other, you know, learn from your classmates. That's another option. YouTube obviously is a wonderful resource. I've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of uh, instructional videos, math videos on my math, uh, uh, Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel that you can certainly check out for free. Uh, get a tutor, you know, that's another option. So you could uh, hire a tutor if that's something that you're able to do, and th they'll be able to fill in some of the gaps of things that you're missing. A lot of different options here, but you want to get the help that you need early, often, stay on top of things so that it's easy and that you develop the confidence so that, you know, you don't have to play that game of constantly catching up. So this concludes, you know, some key tips that I wanted to share with you, a little bit different than my normal instructional videos. Um, if you're interested in tutoring, uh, like I mentioned in that last tip, feel free to reach out to me. I do have a real busy schedule working with students in person. I'm developing an online uh, tutoring uh, schedule as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, reach out to me. We can talk about that as a possibility. Take advantage of the many uh, math tutoring videos I have on Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel. And I just wanna wish you the best of success in your math. You can do it. The fact that you're watching this video means that you're interested and that you probably are capable of taking your math to the next level by implementing these steps. So I just want to encourage you to keep on going and uh, I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.